the big problem that schools have is energy bills. Schools in general spend more on energy than they do on textbooks and learning materials for our children. Now that's got to stop. Yeah. Um, basically we're gifting taxpayers money to the big six energy companies um, instead of w working with our children and producing more things. Solar PV is an ideal solution for school rooftops and the big obstacle for them has been we don't have any money. They, they'll talk to an installer, somebody like Renewable Elements or Ardenham Energy, and they'll go out, they'll have a roof survey done, they'll look at this solution, they'll say, oh, we can generate this much feed-in tariffs from the government, which is the subsidies that come towards uh, for solar PV. Um, they'll look at the energy savings they're making. A typical secondary school would be spending about 10, 12,000 pounds a year on electricity bills, which could be eliminated by having solar on the roof. And they go through this whole process, and it's just great. They look at the proposal, fabulous. And they say, how much does it cost? And then the, the installer has to say 100, 120,000 pounds for your typical secondary school, and the school goes, but we have no money. And as an agent of the Department of Education, um, or a local authority, they're dispersing public funds, which means they're not allowed to incur additional borrowing to be able to pay for the installation. So they can't borrow money. They don't have access to things like higher purchase agreements or finance leases, as private sector organizations would. So they have a real problem. We've designed a rental solution whereby Capitas Finance purchase the equipment, we pay for the installation, so the installer gets paid up front, the school pay nothing up front, they pay for the solution, uh, a rental fee if you like, on a quarterly basis, um, after they've made their energy savings and the feed-in tariffs. So the whole project is cash flow positive for the school from day one. Can I ask what, what happens if the school can't make the rental payments? Well, the, because the rental payments are tailored to match their energy savings and the feed-in tariffs, mm -hmm. um, the only reason they wouldn't um, be able to make the payments would be if the sun doesn't come up tomorrow. And if the sun doesn't come up tomorrow, we've got bigger problems, I think. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, so what sort of are your goals for, would you say, the next year and the next five years for putting solar on schools? But the, the government have a number of programmes in place. The Cabinet Office have a £500 million fund that they're looking to put on government properties because I'm, I'm a big fan of the government leading from the front and the public sector leading from the front and setting the example to say, look, we've saved some of the £500 million a year that schools are currently spending on electricity um, through installing solar PV. The kids get all excited about it. They go home and tell their parents and they have lesson plans worked out where they can look at how much fossil fuel has been replaced by the solar PV installation. Um, so it is very, very exciting in terms of the schools. The public sector, leading from the front, they've got 500 megawatts of expected capacity there. They're funding through another private fund. Capitas expect the market this year to be around about a billion pounds in the solar sector in the UK. And clearly we would like to fund as much of that as we can. Fantastic. Um, what do you think about the limitations on schools for finance? Do you think they should be changed so that schools can have other options? The, the other types of finance, apart from the Capitas solution, um, will incur what's called debt on the balance sheet. And when you, ha when you incur debt on a local authority school or an academy status school, it adds onto the balance sheet. It's then sort of collated up through all of the schools into the Department of Education. You have interest on top of it. And then you're adding interest on top of it. And then you, what you do is you're adding to the national debt. And with the, the status of the economy and the UK finances at the moment, we need to be reducing the national debt, not increasing it. Now, the, the Capitas Finance solution is an operating expense. So it's completely off balance sheet funding. Um, we don't really want to give schools the opportunity to add debt onto, the, onto their balance sheets. And that's why this is a, a really good option for them because it's, they pay for the solution in the same way they currently pay their electricity bills. So it's, it's very, very important that the finance is structured in such a way that it meets the uh, International Accounting Standard 17 about not being a finance lease. The repayments don't have a capital element and an interest element separate. It's just an expense, an operating expense. So th there's lots and lots of work gone into this. The big problem with the financial sector in the UK is there's a, an information gap, um, and it's drastic, between the finance companies and the bank's understanding of solar PV and the reality. We, we talked to some of the UK-based banks, and they said, well, solar, it's a bit of a new technology. Um, we don't really understand it. And then you point out to them that their particular bank invested 3 billion euros in Germany into the solar sector. It's a product they're very happy with, but it's a case of educating them in the UK, the credit teams, the underwriters and the risk assessors to make sure that they're happy um, with, with the equipment. You're basically going for all, all UK schools to have solar? 
But once we're talking, I mean, there's two types of main or two main types of school in the country. One is academy status schools, and there's about 3,000 of those. 2,000 are secondary schools, and there's about 1,000 primary schools. They are their finance, if you like, is all approved through the Education Funding Agency. Now, the Education Funding Agency are part of the Department of Education, and they have to they have a tick list of things that they need to do. Um, is it fair value for the school? Is it going to add debt onto the balance sheets? therefore the national debt increasing um, and they go through a process and that's for the academy schools with local authority schools or grant maintained schools as they used to be called um, there's about 21,000 of those across the country so when we're talking to the finance director at the local authority responsible for the schools in their area it expands out into the other op opportunities for local authorities um, because every town has a, a town hall and a civic centre and they have libraries and leisure centres all of which are public sector buildings all of which have roofs and we, using the schools as a, as a platform if you like to launch that's a great place to start because as you say we're, we're teaching the kids about renewable energy we're teaching them about why we shouldn't be burning dinosaurs uh, anymore to heat our schools and <laughs> to generate electricity what we should be doing is using truly renewable truly free generated electricity um, and of course that role then rolls out into the other public sector buildings in your local authority area if a company has um, like a 500 kilowatt um, installation how much could they save over sort of 20 years um, we were talking about this example here for a, a, an academy school. Um, this was a 200 kilowatt sized installation for, for a mid-sized science academy. And over the 20 year period, they can expect 751,000 pounds back into the school's budgets. Um, and it's cash flow positive from, from day one. So the benefits are, there's no cash outlay for the school, no effect on their spending budgets, fully meets all of the local authority and the education funding agency guidelines and it's actually giving them money back in that they can spend on the pupils instead of just paying, paying bills. Um, energy is the second largest cost for most schools, second only to staff salaries and teacher salaries. Um, we need to re reduce that and spend taxpayers' money on educating our children. And that's what the schools are there for, and that's where the money should be going.